Hello Aquarius, welcome to Radiant Moon Tarot. This is Victoria and we are here doing your new moon in Scorpio reading for November 4th, 2021. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. Let us get right into your reading. If you do, by the way, enjoy my readings, please don't forget to hit the like button on this video and also hit the subscribe button for my channel. So this new moon is landing in your house of your 10th house of career, reputation, status. Uh, you may be looking for a new job. You may be get, making some improvements in your career in some way. And uh, you may finally be getting some recognition that you deserve. All right. And if you don't have that where you currently are, then you may be looking to make a big change. So this is a really great time for you to do that. And, you know, you may have been feeling for quite a while that the stars are kind of pointing you in that direction. And, you know, because sometimes we get a little bored or stagnant where we currently are. So this is really that great time for you to make improvements in all of those areas. Basically, how you make your money, what your reputation is, right? Your uh, chances for promotion raise, maybe even a new um, industry or a new career path altogether. Sometimes we need to toss everything in the bin and start all over again. So it's a really, really positive time for transformation in all those areas. But of course... With the Scorpio new moon, uh, it is a time for transformation in a lot of areas of us as well, and including a spiritual as well, like spiritual awakening, expanding your consciousness, and we do go through a lot of ups and downs with that. All right, so your moon card, we've got action. This is the time, Aquarius, to take a lead role in your life. Have you been feeling as though you've been taking a back seat for a while? Have you been kind of in observatory mode for a little bit? Maybe you've got a situation in your workplace or something and you've just kind of been watching things ride out, trying to make decisions. Hmm, is this going to get better or do I need to cut and run? Whatever your particular situation happens to be, this is the time to get going, to get moving. This is your time to shine. I mean, look at this person in this card. It's like spotlight on this person. All right. This is really your time to take action and get going. This is card number 15. And 15, if we look at the in angelic numerology, ones are about new beginnings, okay? They've all, they're also an indication that you've accomplished a lot, you've had uh, a lot of obstacles, and now you're ready for something new or improved. Fives are about obstacles and challenges, but they're also about excitement and action. All right, so where are you looking to take action in your life? Okay, and uh, so this is really your time to get going in that area. So um, the time for you is now. Now, the thing is, is that, of course, just because there's a new moon doesn't necessarily mean that you're just going to like all of a sudden uh, throw everything, uh, throw everything to the side and clean the slate. But you may be contemplating that because we've got a lunar eclipse a little bit later this month. And this is where things get revealed. This is where endings come in. So this could really start a new cycle for you. We have Earth School coming in here as well. Life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning. So this may be the time where you're doing a little bit of research in your life. All right, now this can be research in regards to your job, your career path. Perhaps you're contemplating going back to school in some way to elevate your status, to put a little notch on your resume. All right, but this is also a time for you to... Um, really embrace the spiritual side of things, your connection with spirit, with your intuition. You may have uh, been experiencing Aquarius, especially you, you may have been experiencing throughout the last year or two years, actually, um, maybe even longer than that, uh, this period of rebirth, of awakening, of spiritual growth. You've been very connected to the stars, to the universe. And this is really your time to expand on that as well. Are you perhaps considering a spiritual career path in some way? All right, but this is... You know, this is really showing that you have come a long way. You've learned a lot, okay? And, you know, you may be expanding your mind, expanding your vibration even more. 
All right, and you have grown and you have overcome. So uh, beautiful energy with that there. So you may also actually be on the path of leading other people, teaching other people, um, especially with that Earth School card, right? Maybe you're a natural born leader, a natural born teacher, right? And part of your soul's path, your soul's journey is to guide others. You're a light worker, right? Um, and shine your light onto other people and help guide them and help walk them through things. So there may be a career that you can make out of that, or maybe you've already been doing it on the side and now you're looking to do it a little bit more. So let's see what else we've got for you here. We've got the anxiety card. We have faith. Reflection. And we have pain. All right. So the anxiety card is what we're releasing, all right, with this new moon. Anything that makes you feel like a little ball of tension, all right? Are you in a situation that you get butterflies in your stomach every day that causes you a lot of stress, all right? Do you feel anxious about change, right? Not everyone loves change, okay? And with this new moon, this is your perfect time to make those kind of improvements. Are you getting the recognition that you deserve? Are you getting paid what you're worth? Is your home life what you want it to be? Wherever you feel this anxiety, and anxiety is, um, you know, it's a, ugh, anxiety is, is a difficult one. Um, we can sometimes find ourselves in situations that we've put ourselves in. Sometimes we can't do anything about things right now today. And so spirit wants to show you that there is a way to alleviate your anxiety if you're in those situations that you can't necessarily escape from. Or, you know, let's say you get, you know, a butterflies in your stomach going to your workplace. Maybe it's a toxic work environment. And, you know, you're, whenever you drive in or whenever you, you know, have to, you know, wake up and you're like, oh God, I don't want to go. And you just never know what's going to hit you that day. Um, what this new moon will show you with this spiritual aspect of it is how better to deal with those situations and start to make plans to maybe make some change in those areas if you're able to. And if you're not, then this new moon is really trying to show you, spirit's trying to show you how to better deal with those moments in life that bring us this anxiety. And part of that as part of your spiritual aspect here is, um, you know, uh, cord cutting meditations, clearing your chakras, um, finding a way to protect, uh, defend your energy, right? Because quite often we do absorb other people's energy, right? And that can, you know, have us like this little ball of nerves. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can do that. And of course, if you are in a situation, one of the best ways is to find something a little bit better. All right. So when we have this anxiety that we're releasing is anything that gives you this particular kind of energy. All right. And we're finding a better way to deal with it or maybe making plans for the future for something that's a little bit more peaceful. If you're on a manifestation journey, all right, spirit wants you to surrender your intentions, release your intentions into the universe, and then trust and have faith that there's great things happening for you in the background. And quite often when we're on a manifestation journey, we do tend to get impatient. We tend to get frustrated, all right, or we tend to, you know, be a little bit of a ball of a ball of nerves because, you know, we desperately want something. And so spirit wants you here to release your intentions and then trust and have faith that your, um, that your intentions have been heard and that the universe is busy, hard at work in the background, okay, putting something together for you. We need to remember to be open. Remember, we need to be uh, mindful of our thoughts and our feelings, all right, because wherever we, wherever our attention goes is where your energy flows, right? And we don't want it flowing there, okay? We want to have faith. We want to trust in the universe. We want to be open and receptive to new opportunities, right? And we need to also be ready to take action on them because quite often, you know, sometimes, yes, our intentions and what we are attracting into our life sometimes it just bam hits us out of left field and it's like oh my god all these things are happening all at once more often than not it comes in as the opportunities that are in front of us and we can choose whether to take action or not 
all right but we need to have trust we need to trust and have faith that things are happening in the background it's not always easy but it's really about being mindful of your thoughts and your feelings what to be aware of going forward all right is about faith okay a lack of faith sometimes we don't believe in ourselves Aquarius and you know it's all about your circumstances it's all about your history right everyone comes from a different place everyone has different circumstances so in those times when we're feeling anxious or we're feeling frustrated spirit wants to remind us to have faith have faith in yourself have faith that your situation will improve have faith that your uh your intentions have been heard and there, there's all sorts of things going on in the background believe in yourself right it's all about the cycle of life right we've got all these cycles here that are here right so we need to have faith that things are progressing the way that we want them but first and foremost you need to have faith in yourself so spirit wants to remind you of that that sometimes things take time all right sometimes perfection takes time right and we do need to believe and we need to go with that flow because what we attract with the reflection energy here, what we attract is a reflection of ourselves, all right? What face do you put out in the world? What energy are you putting out into the world, right? How do people see you? What do you see when you look in the mirror? Are you happy with your current circumstances? And Spirit wants to remind you here that your thoughts become things, okay? The energy that you project, just like your image in a mirror, the energy that you project out into the universe is what comes back to you. So even if you're not on a manifestation journey, we always have the ability and to manifest things into our lives, right? Sometimes we are consciously manifesting things. We're setting intentions. We're writing things down. You know, we're doing a little bonfire at the full moon, you know, those kind of things. But other times it's really a subconscious um, invisible manifestation. All right. And so spirit really, really, really wants to drive the energy home here for you that you need to do. Be mindful of your thoughts, your feelings. Okay. Be mindful of the energy that you project out into the world. And that is what you attract back. Right. And if you've ever gotten out of bed in the morning and stubbed your toe, okay, on your nightstand or in the corner of your bed, and that is the absolute worst way to wake up, um, you know, it's like, whoa, you don't need a cup of coffee with that one. But if you've ever been in that situation where that's how your day starts, and then you get in the mindset, well, this is going to be a crappy day, and then all of a sudden you you stub your toe and then you drop your curling iron in the toilet or something and you know and then you you your cup of coffee goes cold or you don't have any cream left and then you have a traffic jam on your way to work and then all these things and it just snowballs out of control for the rest of the day and it all starts because you focused on that toe and oh my god my day is going to go into the pooper today because this is how it started but um it's a reflection okay of that energy that you've put out instead right you stub your toe and you're like sitting on the corner of your bed rubbing the most painful uh, thing in the world right first thing in the morning and then if you laugh it off okay you laugh it off and you're like oh my god okay well okay okay that was the worst thing that's gonna happen in my day today and let's see where else we go and you know and then you might still drop your curling iron in the toilet but now you've got a funny story to tell at work right now you maybe have that traffic jam still as well but now you're like oh thank god i didn't want to go to work today anyway and now i have time to drink my cup of coffee that i had to stop and pick up on the way because i didn't have cream to put in it at my house right and it's all about how you deal with things right so you may still have certain things that go on in your day but you're looking at them a little bit differently and you will you will uh your day will actually be better for that right and you know but you may not have those things right you may see that traffic jam up ahead or you may have the foresight there to um, listen to the traffic report and you might see it and you're like oh no I'm going to deke off to the right here I'm going to take a I'm going to take a detour because that doesn't look good in front of me right and it's, it's really just that reflection of that energy and you know if you if you think that everything's going to go wrong and nothing's going to go your way then you get in that kind of dark 
uh, dark kind of energy. Whereas, you know, if you kind of look at a positive spin or you, you look ahead at something or you just deal with those challenges, right, then, you know, you will attract less of them or you will at least turn the, you know, supposedly negative things around and your day won't be as affected by it, right? Your mood won't be as affected by it. You won't get that anxiety about it necessarily. All right, so we always need to remember to, you know, put put out that vibration that we want to attract back, right? And, you know, as they say, right, staying positive, okay, having a positive mindset doesn't mean that things are going to go your way, okay? But having a positive mindset changes how you deal with the things that happen in your day, changes how you how the energy reflects back onto you and ultimately affects what kind of energy that you absorb back into yourself right so you know imagine that you know that initial stub toe right you still might have all the same things that happen in your day right because your stub toe isn't going to necessarily attract a traffic jam or not but you have a completely different mindset of how you deal with those things, right? So, you know, the first one, you focus on that negative stub toe. By the time you get to work, you're in one hell of a bad mood. Whereas if you kind of laugh it off, you focus on the positive, right? And then you're stuck in that traffic and you're like, oh, I had a meeting I didn't want to go to anyway, right? You get to work and you're still in a good mood. And it's really all about that mood that you're projecting out, right? And then people react to you differently and then other events in your day uh, go a different way. So that's just kind of like a little day-to-day -day practical story. But the point is, is that you have the ability right now to attract things into your life that are a reflection of what you put out there. All right, and you have the ultimate ability right now to attract a lot of really positive things towards you. And we always have the ability to manifest, but we can manifest the good and the bad. So when we keep that positive mindset, okay, it's not about things not going our way, or it's not about, you know, we, we may or may not have the same opportunities, but it's all in how we deal with things as they come up, right? And then, of course, our mood gets a little bit better. So perhaps some of you are maybe changing your mindset there a little bit, or, you know, having that little bit of reflection, all right, and to, you know, into how we deal with things throughout our day. Your overall outcome, and uh, actually I didn't realize that I used the stub toe scenario here and we do have the pain card. So your overall outcome here is really how you deal with difficulties, how you deal with things that don't go your way. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you might actually be the person, all right, with this reflection card, right? You might be the, you might be the person who helps other people through their periods of pain, of grief, of doubt, all right? But the pain card as well shows that the reflection and the faith energy here, you, ha you ultimately have the ability here to deal with difficulties in a different way, in a more positive way, things that cause you grief, things that cause you trouble, pain, anxiety, all right? Instead of focusing on that negative aspect, that low vibe aspect, okay, you're going to have faith. You're going to see um, maybe even see the bright side of something negative, okay? Or take a negative experience or something that's painful, past, present, future even, all right? You're going to take that situation and reflect on it and have a look at something. Why did that happen? Why didn't that? What can I learn from this, right? And again, that kind of way of dealing with things doesn't mean that everything's always going to go your way, but it's a completely different way of dealing with it, right? And then we don't get anxiety, right? And then we don't let things, um, you know, we don't get things, uh, let things get us down in the dumps for an entire day, perhaps for a moment, perhaps for a moment in time, all right? But ultimately, we are going to be able to move past things a little bit better. But again, you know, that pain energy, some of you may have that uh, ability to lead other people and to help other people through their moments of pain, anxiety, their past, um, their present. Thank you. How am I receiving? Okay. Um, their past, their present, right? And again, you may be a healer, a guide, right? For others, a beacon of light that others 
um, gravitate towards, right? Because that is the energy that you put out. And so you can attract um, those people that need you, right? And sometimes it's a little bit draining, especially if you're on a healing journey. We do attract those people that um, need our help, right? So, you know, we do need to make sure that we do take steps to protect our own energy and ground yourself um, you know, uh, you know, uh, cord cutting meditations to clear out someone else's energy, those kind of things. All right. So if you are on that journey, it's a beautiful journey, but yes, it does. Um, you know, it does sometimes cause us a little bit of issues there as well. So remember that reflection there, just make sure if that's your scenario and you do attract those people and that's part of your soul's journey, your soul's path. All right. Then make sure that you always ground and protect yourself as well. Okay. Cause you don't want to absorb someone else's pain. You want to help them through it. All right. So we've got the lover's card coming out for you. We've got the five of cups. The hermit there's your soul's path and there's your healing energy and we've got the eight of swords the energy at the bottom of the deck we've got the ten of pentacles no matter what you do success abundance flows to you this is your time to really follow your path follow your dream this is your time to get your rewards your accolades something new something improved this is the go for it energy you have the ability to attract anything into your life that makes you feel abundant and prosperous, okay? That gives you this success, all right? The Ten of Pentacles is an absolutely fabulous energy, right? It's one of, you know, uh, focused on being focused on your family or providing for your family. It's one of, you know, possibly clearing out some old um, issues that have stemmed from your family. Sometimes we get things that we absorb or things that we work through from our past, all right, but this is really that energy of abundance, success, long-term stability that comes in here. And that's what you have the ability to attract, whatever that happens to look like for you. All right, success, abundance, beautiful. With the lover's card, all right, the lover's card is about partnering up with the right people, but it is also part of a soul's journey. When we have the lover's card and the anxiety, right, so this is really spirit showing you how to connect with spirit, how to connect with your higher self and to bring in a little bit more balance and harmony into your life. So if you are in that situation of any kind that, you know, causes this stress, this anxiety, it's not where you want it to be. The lover's card shows that there may be a different path. The lover's card brings in choices, all right? Shows that there is certainly something better that's divinely guided for you, towards you, all right? And you have a choice, all right? Do I stay where I currently am? Do I make changes, right? Do I need to make improvements, okay? Um, do I need to ask for what I want? Sometimes that can be uh, fill us with anxiety. But the lovers also does show us connecting with our higher selves as well. All right, shows your connection with spirit. So, you know, we can always go within. We can always connect with spirit to find our way through a difficult situation. All right, but the lovers does show that you have the potential here to partner up with the right people people who are on your same playing field, people who match your vibration with that reflection coming out. All right. And whether that means making improvements in your current situation, your home life, your job, your career. Okay. Um, you know, you may, you know, you may have changes that you are looking to make, or you may have improvements that are on your way. And the lover's card brings in that ability to have faith and trust that things are going to you know, work out your way, right? But it's really all about your mindset and how you take action. So that lover's card shows that there may be some really um, big choices that you're making and whatever choice you make, this will work out well for you. Five of Cups comes in as a reminder and with that faith energy as well going forward, the Five of Cups reminds us here that even in times where things don't go our way with these th three spilt cups, we do need to reflect, we do need to examine, and we do need to have a look at maybe why something didn't go that way, okay, or the way we wanted it. But then Spirit wants us to be mindful, okay, and have a look at the lesson, have a look at why something didn't work, 
and then turn around and focus on that positive. The Five of Cups is not the first time I've gotten this card out in these readings. And this is really spirit saying, you know, process your emotions, process your feelings, okay? If something hasn't gone your way, something from your present, your past, even something in your future that may not go your way, this is your stubbed toe with those three cups spilled over. But then it's all about your mindset going forward because we still have two cups that are... Um, standing upright. So have faith that you will find solutions. Have faith that you will move forward. Examine your feelings or your current situation or your past situation, right? And um, reflect on that, okay? And, you know, but then ultimately we need to move forward and keep that positive mindset, right? Have faith, Okay, the hermit comes in with that reflection energy. So your soul's path, your soul's journey, the hermit shows that you actually are a very wise person. Okay, you've got a lot of inner wisdom. And this is practical wisdom, but also spiritual wisdom as well. And the hermit gives you the ability to um, go within and find your way forward. Where are you meant to be? What is the answers? What are you looking for? What are you seeking for? Right? With the hermit, we've got the star right in his lantern. That star represents your inner light, your wisdom, but it also represents your goals, your dreams, and this is what's guiding you forward. And that hermit knows that that lantern will light, light the way forward will light the path and the hermit is that quiet reflective energy that has trust and faith that you're on the right path and that even in those times where things don't go your way it gives you the ability to reflect and to heal and then continue moving forward but the hermit can also show that yes some of you are absolutely on this path where you may be that guiding light for other people you may be um you may be called upon to lead people on their path forward to help them through difficult times right and even if that's not a spiritual path for you that can be part of your career path all right you're a natural born leader aquarius you have a very innovative way of thinking there's really nobody quite like you and sometimes it's annoying that people uh, that people do gravitate towards you it's like can't you just figure it out your stuff yourself but for the most part you're very generous you're very giving, sometimes too much so with that anxiety card, right? Because when we give too much of ourselves and we feel trapped, we feel stuck, we feel a little bit anxious, right? Because, you know, it's like sometimes we get a little bit frustrated as well, right? Because we can't always change uh, the entire world, the entire planet, right? And, you know, Aquarius, you're always, your heart's always in a good place and you're always trying to help others or, you know, do something for the greater good. And sometimes that gets frustrating when things don't go our way or when we're feeling as though we can't influence the situation. But sometimes we do tend to put ourselves last as well. So the hermit really does show that whatever your situation is, okay, you are a leader. You are a guide. You're a beacon for other people. You have great ways of looking at things differently than other people do. And this may be part of your soul's journey. And, you know, again, in a, a career situation, right, doesn't have to be a spiritual journey of any kind, but in a career situation, you help resolve problems and issues because nobody else has your way of thinking. All right. You're an innovator. Okay. And sometimes that comes across to people as, you know, a little bit out there, right? But it's all for the better good. And with the Eight of Swords, right, we have the ability going forward, okay, to release ourselves from restrictions, okay? What's been making you feel stuck? Where do you want to go? And when we have the Eight of Swords, this shows that you know, with the pain card here is that you are going to deal with things a little bit differently going forward. And that sometimes we can use periods where we're, you know, feeling a little bit stuck, we can go within with that hermit energy. And we can contemplate about things, we can think about things, we can use our intuition. All right, but the eight of swords usually shows us feeling a little bit trapped, a little bit stuck. And our ability going forward is to release ourselves or find a way to release other people. All right, sometimes we need to face our fear. Okay, but also, you know, it's a weird energy. I don't usually get it with the eight of swords because it's not really the meeting. Um, it's not really the meaning behind it, but 
um, you know, spirit says here with this particular eight of swords is that sometimes we don't, sometimes we just need to trust about the things that are unfolding, um, for us in the background and we don't need to actually do anything at the moment. So, um, I mean, it is, it is one of feeling restricted, but sometimes, um, it feels sometimes here that spirit wants you to embrace some quiet contemplation rather than and take your time on something and rather than take like how should we say rather than do something um impulsive okay because sometimes when we act irrationally or we you know we um don't think about things first all right then that can sometimes bring us um some issues sometimes back to square one so it's an interesting en interesting energy that's there and like i said it's not really the the meaning of that card but that's something that spirit wants to get through so maybe some of you out there tend to um you tend to maybe um contemplate about something for a little while and then you get a little bit impatient and then you sometimes do things spur of the moment and then sometimes you uh, dig yourself a little bit of a hole so spirit says here with that eight of swords if that's you okay that won't be everybody that sometimes you need to be stuck in one spot sometimes you need to take your time and sometimes you need to go within and really contemplate all right about where you want to go even if your current situation isn't good for you and you need to make some plans in the background rather than making rash decisions. All right, but trust your intuition no matter what. But you have the ability to free yourself from any situation that is not serving you, and you have the ability to move forward, but the hermit wants you to take your time, all right, and wants you to trust in yourself, but also trust in the process as well, and that trust that if you are in a situation that you're feeling trapped or restricted, that yes, you have the ability to free yourself, go forward. You have the ability to see the truth. You have the ability to um, follow your goals and dreams. But we do need to be patient sometimes as well. All right. I'm going to leave that there for you because I think I rambled on a little bit too long for you. But I'm going to close out your reading with a few making magic cards. So these are magical activation symbols. And uh, with a... Thank you. Ooh, like that one. Um, magical activation symbols. So I'll hold them up to the camera and hopefully it'll focus in. And if you like the ones that you see, take a screenshot and keep it on your phone. And the first one, how very fortuitous that we've got this for you, considering this is your 10th house of career and we have the magical symbol for successful career. A happy working environment, pay raises and promotions. Okay, beautiful energy. We also have one enchanted evening, and it says the perfect night. Now that can mean pretty much anything, okay? What is the perf what is the idea of a perfect enchanted evening mean to you? All right, and then we have time to shine. Creates the energetic resonance for golden opportunities. Beautiful. Leave that there for you, Aquarius. I hope there was something in this reading that resonated for you in some way. If there was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I uh, thank you for so much for watching, and I hope you have a great new moon. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.